the chair of the California Republican Party, Jessica Milan Patterson. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Andrew, great to be with you. All right, uh, California, looking at some polls here. I know that you have to stay neutral, so I'm, I'm just throwing some poll numbers at you here. 73 to 19, 54 point spread. Um, that's a challenge. This is technically a blue state. I know there's a lot of great conservatives and there's a lot of Republican voters, but you also have a lot of moderates. Um, this seems to be, and we did some analysis on this. We were looking at the blue state races. So Vermont, Massachusetts, we were looking around the Virginia suburbs. Trump is winning where the conservatives are. He's winning where the moderates are. He's winning in the blue states. That's not an opinion. That's just what we're seeing in the polls and the results. Uh if if Nikki Haley can't win, what do you have? Is it 171 delegates? 161. 161 169 delegates. More than any other state in the nation. Um, that's going to be a huge challenge. Uh, uh, that's going to make the race even harder for any other candidate. If you've got a, a lead candidate who's won every state thus far and will win California and Texas. Absolutely. Uh, California is the big on Super Tuesday. We actually have more Republicans here in California than any other state in the nation, and we continue to grow that number. Our last registration report had California Republicans up 102,000 Republicans since October. In that same time frame, Democrats actually lost 68,000 registrations. So uh, while we are what some would consider a deep blue state, we are the reason why we have a House majority with the five congressional seats that we we picked up in the last two cycles, and we are home to more Republicans than any other state in the nation. And uh, talk to you about Steve Garvey. Uh, you've got a Los Angeles Dodgers legend running as a conservative. Last I checked, he was up five points on Adam Schiff. Yeah, the last LA Times poll did have Steve Garvey in the lead at 27%. Uh, slightly behind him is Adam Schiff at 27, behind him, Katie Porter, and then behind her, uh, Barbara Lee. So this is really turning into a situation where we are going to see a Republican, you know, here in California, outside of our closed presidential race, we have an open primary where the top two vote getters, regardless of P uh, political affiliation move on to the general. Before I was chairman, there were several times when our statewide ticket did not include a Republican for a specific spot. And this really gives Californians the opportunity, the opportunity to have a choice come November. Um, if you have Adam Schiff, Barbara Lee and Katie Porter, I would argue that they are all the same. They are D.C. insiders talking about D.C. insider stuff. Steve Garvey is an outsider. He's not someone that's necessarily been affiliated with the party, but he is someone who's been affiliated with the state of California, whether as a legendary Dodger or even on the San Diego Padres. This is someone who right. has given so much to the state of California. Uh, some of the polling, like I said, I saw Garvey. It could have been different polling than the L.A. Times. That's that jungle primary thing, right? That's what they call it? We call it a top two primary. <laughs> okay, I heard a reference. That's, I don't know, that's that's kind, of, that's kind of a weird system. I would think that the Republicans would, would have a primary and the Democrats would have a primary, and okay. Um, but Garvey's not running as some milquetoast Republican. He's running as a pretty pretty conservative candidate, isn't he? He is a very conservative candidate. I think he's also someone who's just a common sense Californian. You know, when you watch what's happened to our state with one party Democrat rule, whether it's the rise in crime and brazen uh, smash and grabs happening all uh, happening all over our state, our failing education system where less than 50 percent of our children are reading at grade level, a homeless crisis that we've now spent 20 billion dollars on for it not to get any better and to get much worse or the unaffordability crisis that we have here in California. When you have someone like that, that can speak to not just Republicans, because you can't win with just Republicans here, but decline to states, unaffiliated voters and soft Democrats who have common sense about what is happening to their state. I think he has a huge opportunity come November. You know, you, you look at, at, at conservative candidates that have won California like Ronald Reagan. I mean, I've been calling it the Biden invasion, along with the Biden inflation. And I've been saying to anyone that will listen to me. Regional divisions, regions of the country, more urban, suburban, rural areas, 
We're all affected the same by this. This is not a question of what infrastructure goes where. This is a question of can we fill up the pantry? Can we fill up the gas tank? Even people that consider themselves well off, you know, upper middle class people feel this is hurting them as well. So this is not just the poor feeling this thing. It is basically everyone. And when you have Garvey or likely tonight Trump, I would not be surprised. I know that the the naysayers will say he'll never win California. (laughs) I don't know. A lot can happen between now and November 5th. Absolutely. And I think when you see, you know, the border crisis is a perfect example of this. You know, California has always been a border state. President Biden and and Vice President Harris have turned every single state in this country into a border state. We are watching liberal Democrat progressive mayors in places like Chicago and New York who are buckling under the pressure of the migrant situation that we have. And so when we see this happen and we see that this becomes a top issue for voters across the board, we know what they are doing in Washington, D.C. is not working. Also, to wrap up here, your governor's running is, what, $73 billion shortfalls, asking for another $6.5 billion for low-income housing. That would bring you right around $80 billion. I mean, maybe, maybe California's sick of this. I don't know. I got to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Andrew.